All right, here's my single HQST panel. I'm gonna take a little bit of look at what we're doing and what we're starting with before I uh, put these together. So first thing I did was make a stand. And you know, we'll take a look at uh, a little better at this as I build the second one. But uh, basically, it's just some PVC. Um, I have uh, across the top here, this uh, piece is just a half inch. So it fits inside of, of uh, these things. So as I tilt that up, you know, this thing will, will swivel and tilt on there. Um, I have it cut so it's a uh, pretty much a press fit between the, the rails of this panel. But then also just put a screw in to kind of hold it in place. And then the, uh, the rest of this PVC is three quarter inch. So two T's and then two elbows and then just the uh, a vertical and a horizontal piece. And it's a, uh, a very simple stand. Um, holds it up well. Um, make another one for the second one. So again, we'll take a little bit better look at, uh, at how that is gonna work. But, but to, uh, to fold this thing up, see if I can do this. If I just lean this forward, all right, and then wires, you just slide them under there, slide this one under there, and of course this other one came out. Whoops, there we go. So each wire has just been slid underneath the uh, this frame, and then I'll lay this down, make it a little bit easier maybe. And then this frame, I also designed as a uh, tight fit so once you're ready to pack it up you just push in press fit so now it's kind of pressed and held into place and then when you pick up the panel to carry it uh, the wires are contained and the uh, the frame is contained so everything is easy to pick up and transport. All right, this is the panel I'm using, an HQST. Uh, all kinds of uh, videos on YouTube where people have suspected these come out of the same factory as the Renogy because there's so many uh, absolute uh, definitive similarities between them. So I don't have any direct knowledge about that, but i but, uh, seen enough of it to uh, think that's probably the case. So it is a 100 watt panel. I've got two of them, as we uh, will see. And uh, there are the specs. And we're gonna test uh, some of that open circuit voltage and, uh, and the amperage here. So I'll show you how to do that with your panels. Uh, make sure that uh, they are what they are. And uh, see uh, how good a quality that you end up getting if you don't end up getting these. Okay, PVC is awesome to work with. It makes a nice frame. It is uh, strong. It is cheap, real, real cheap, easy to cut, but who wants it to look like PVC when you get it back together? If um, the frame we just looked at, of course, you didn't see any writing. So the best thing to do with that is nail polish remover, otherwise known as acetone. Now I've built a lot of PVC stuff in my life for some reason, this stuff here is the best at getting the writing off of the PVC. So it's a uh, Onyx uh, professional, I guess. Got it at Walmart. Like I said, for some reason, it just seems to work better than uh, all the rest. But to get this stuff off, just get an old rag, a little bit of acetone. And then let me see if I can get in frame here. And then you just start wiping it off. Now you can see this first pass just kind of leaves some pink residue. That's okay. So then once it's down to some pink, then let's find a cleaner spot on the rag, some more acetone, and then just keep wiping and that'll eventually come off. The uh, black seems to come off better than the, than the pink here. That off, that all off, 
So that's how you make PVC to where it doesn't look like PVC anymore. So we'll give that a bit of a wipe and then we'll keep going to the next. All right, here's how we put together the stand. All right, so I'm gonna start. This is that uh, half inch piece that we're using. I've already cut it and the cut sizes should have already been placed in the video. But uh, we're gonna take the, um, the T fittings, they're three quarter T's, and so they fit on here and they're, they're loose and uh, they can slide around, move around. So we're gonna put those T fittings on first. And then uh, up here where this, uh, the wiring connections are, that's what I'm gonna use for the top of the panel. Keep this up off the ground and out of the mud and the wet and what have you. So this piece uh, was cut. So it's gonna be a bit of a press fit. It's gonna be tight going in. <clears throat> and to set it, what I did, and it seems to work well, is I'm gonna start with it about one foot from um, the top edge of the panel to the, the top of this bar, just so I can get them kind of evenly spaced to get a starting point. So again, my theory was this panel is about uh, about three feet long from top to bottom. Um, so we're about two thirds of the way up for our support. <clears throat> All right, so we've got that in. We're not gonna screw this down yet. We'll see why in a minute. And then it's just the simple uh, to put together uh, legs. So one elbow on a leg. And then uh, one elbow on a leg, and then put the cross brace in. And we'll turn that a little bit so the pretty side is out, if it ever matters. Okay, so we've got that together. Um, I am going to maybe kind of go off camera a bit, but I'm going to use the concrete to kind of press these things in and together as tight as possible. All right, so that's the press fit. <clears throat> I, uh, I probably won't hook or screw these things together or uh, glue them or anything. I found that it's not really necessary, but if you want to do that, you can. So then, we measure these things two inches just to get them kind of centered. And then we're going to just poke the legs into the T. and get them in tight. <clears throat> All right, and then get this uh, bottom in the frame a little better. But on this bottom, then we want this bottom to press fit tight. And that is, this one must be ever so slightly longer than the first one I built because we're I'm off more than I was my first one. So this is why we don't screw it down. I'm gonna pull this up too much. Just so this bottom catches. Probably can't see on the uh, on the camera, but there is a little bit of uh, writing on the bottom of this, these things, and that makes the perfect catch for a friction fit so you want it to pop in like that so it's going to hold it in place and then still be able to pop out to come loose so that's about where we want to be and let me get some measurements just so we're even so we're off a bit See if I can yeah. and then. 
All right, so we are even across the top. And we still got a good press fit and come back out again. So that's what we want. All right, good. So now I'm going to drill the top of this in. All right, now we got everything situated the way we want it. We're just going to drill a little uh, spot for a sheet metal screw into this top bar. As soon as you feel it pop through, stop. So the back side of, uh, or the underside of the uh, PVC will protect the panel. And then split. Screw it. And then the other side. And that's really all there is to it for the stand. It is done. Easy as pie. All right, found a pretty neat app to aim your solar panels. Oh, there we go. It's called Optimum Tilt. So open it up, it's going to show um, the uh, the tilt for your uh, location, and you set that location on the map, I've already done that before, and you just open it up, and then um, you've got a uh, map there, if you click on the map, and it works just like a Google map kind of thing, so it, it finds your location, so if you're traveling around, just reset your location, and then uh, it's going to find your tilt for you, so... Oops, if we go back to, now if we go monthly tilt, it's going to show for my current location by the month, there's uh, your optimum tilt. So you see in uh, June and July, this thing should be laying flat on the ground. Uh, other months, a little bit of tilt. And then uh, summer months, the other summer months, a little bit of tilt. Winter months, uh, some big tilt. So, but then it also shows me for March 4th, that is today, that the tilt should be 38 degrees. And then, if we, there we go, then if we go to this inclinometer, so now as it's laying on the table, it says it's at a two degree tilt. So then all I have to do is lay this on the panel and tilt it up until it says, 38 degrees and that's the angle I should set the panel at for today so we're gonna go do that now so there we are set up slipped a little bit maybe but let's see get some shading see I was at 36 degrees after I put the stake in of course it timed out well, there we go about 37 36 degrees so we're close enough <clears throat> but there it is there's two panels propped up and a little stake at the back to help hold them. So now we'll do uh, some output test. All right, so here we are at the back of the panel. We're gonna do an open circuit, open circuit voltage test and a open current test. <clears throat> Of the panels make sure they're operating as they should so we've got this set on voltage i got it set on 200 dc the thing can put out up to 21 volts so it goes that would be over the 20 that's available so then we just get uh, the uh, the red banded lead and get a the red end in it and the black lead and get the black in it and then so that we've got about 18 or 19 volts. So these things have been sitting out in the sun for about 30 minutes now. So they've heated up a bit, so they, they don't drop their, uh, their max output a bit. 
so there we are so we're we're working good so the next little test we want to do is for our meter we've got to switch the red lead over to the 10 amp side and then we'll switch this over to amps on the dial and just do the same thing again so here we go the uh, red banded lead in the in the red and then the black lead now when you put the black put the second one in it's going to spark a tiny bit uh that's okay that's what it does so we're getting about 4.65 amps i think 565 is max voltage so winter day not the greatest sun so there's uh there's our test the panels functioning as it should okay here's my setup We've got both panels connected and uh propped up on their new pvc mounts everything's working great i've got the panels wired in series which means i've got the positive from this panel coming over connected to the negative from that panel and then the negative lead coming out of this panel and the positive lead coming out of that panel and we're coming back here to my kayak battery for I got some partial shading going in my backyard so I moved the panels out to the driveway so we're looking at getting 182 watts out of them 32 volts almost 6 amps out of the panels into the battery 12.8 amps so uh, and then there's the uh, kayak monitor 173 watts 183 watts so again we're relatively close 13 amps 12.8 amps Oops, time out 12.8 amps so in charging well so the panels in the driveway where they got some full sun so seem to be doing doing very well okay now to add some hinges it's gonna be the fun part so this is what i've done i've got the two panels uh kind of facing towards each other i'm going to put them together facing to help protect the uh, glass of the uh, solar panels so i've got them clamped together got the uh, both the bottom feet down the same side and uh i just found some had some scrap pieces of uh plastic i think it's from an old cutting board but just to kind of space it and some clamps to hold it together and then my uh, hinges i've got laying on here so that they are going to fold i can grab it up like this once uh and those two will come together once i screw them in so that the panels will fold out and then lay flat um, as far as spacing what I've done here is I've just kind of figured about nine inches there to the uh, to the center punch move that a little bit so about nine inches to the center hole uh, again this whole thing was about 36 just under 36 inches long so I, I figured that gives them a good uh, spacing between uh, the length of the panel should hold them good so now it's time to drill some holes
Alrighty, it's together. So it's a folder, officially, officially a folding suitcase. And now all I need to do is make a handle. I'm gonna put some bumpers on it to kind of help protect it here. Do that, the bumpers next, I think. Okay, then for bumpers, I'm using uh, these uh, little 3M bumpers. Anything 3M usually sticks pretty good, so I've got a dash peel off. And then stick that there for pressure. And then the next one. Keeps the two pieces separated. A little gap here uh, to protect the glass. Just my hinges uh, on the other side uh, also create a gap. So we should be good to go. Okay, to make some clasps for our uh, suitcase to keep it shut, we're gonna use a, a little short piece of that uh, half inch PVC that we used to make the, uh, the cross brace. <clears throat> On that so this is about two and a quarter inches and we're going to heat it and flatten it to start off with so got it uh, set on top of a little bit of a aluminum foil there got uh, my Harbor Freight special uh, heat gun uh, they're only 20 bucks be surprised how many times you use it once you figure out how uh, cool it is to make things with it so first we're going to heat it and then we're going to put it uh, in this vise here with a, got a couple little boards to make the, uh, the bits wider here. And we're going to flatten it. So uh, here goes. Heat it up first. Wear some gloves. Get it heated on uh, all sides. All right, it's starting to get a little soft, not quite there yet. All right, it's getting pretty uh, squishy. So we're gonna get it here in our vise and give it a big squeeze. All right, that's in there. Can't see it but we're gonna let it set for a, uh, a few minutes and cool. Okay, here's what we just made. A flat piece of PVC. Not rocket science, and they even real pretty, but uh, I've made better, but it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be our clasp for our solar suitcase. <clears throat> and then how are we gonna do that? With uh, this stuff. Now this is 3M Scotch brand, um, I call it dual lock because that's what's on the back sticky side of this thing is 3M dual lock. But basically it's um, 
like uh, Velcro on steroids. Um, both sides are the stiff side. There is no soft side to this. So it's the same piece. You just cut it and put it together. <clears throat> so I've cut, um, cut a piece to match this and uh, cut a couple pieces that are going to go on our, uh, our suitcase. So let's go uh, take a look at that. See if I can move over here. And then get this a little bit closer, maybe. Okay, so this one is one I've already made. You can see it sitting, sitting there. Um, pretty strong, we flip it off. So two pieces of that super Velcro there, one piece there. You just snap it on to hold it together. When you want to take it apart, you just, uh, or open it up, you just uh, stick it on that way. But this stuff is uh, strong as can be, pops in almost like a snap, and then that thing's gonna hold closed. So now, we're gonna put one on this other end down here. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just get an alcohol swab or if you got a bottle of alcohol and a rag and wipe it real good. And then spacing wise, I'm gonna put them directly opposite of where the hinges are. The hinges are straight, straight down there. So I'm gonna wipe it with the alcohol swab, get any oil or residue that might be on this thing off. And then this uh, dual lock, you just pick off the backing And this is like that uh, 3M VHB stuff, if you ever use that. It sticks to anything and everything uh, permanently, unless you want to get it off, and then it'll come off. So kind of line it up with the hinge. Um, set that about right there. And put it on and press. Hold it for a few seconds. Alright, my other piece. And just put it on and press. And then we'll do the same with our PVC, clean it up a bit with the swab. Our larger piece. <coughs> and uh, just off the camera here, but stick that on. And then I'm gonna, I'm off camera, but I'm gonna press that in. And then we just come over here and lock. Snaps in. And now that thing is not going anywhere. Pick it up by, by uh, one side. Hold it upside down, shake it, it's staying closed. It's not going anywhere until you want it to. Okay, next for some cable storage. This is something used to hold electrical cords, I guess, called a cable raptor. So if you can see in the background there, I've already got one tied, uh, just some paracord. I'm gonna tie another one on and that is going to hold our uh, extension cables. And here is the finished product for cable storage. Here, so 
You can see it's just held in by those two clips. Paracord. Purple's not required, but it does make it faster, better, stronger. Go Tigers. Okay, now for a carry handle. All right, I've already made one side, and with one side, I can pick this thing up. And uh, of course, with my fantastical latches, it doesn't fall apart. But uh, we're gonna take a look at how, uh, how I made this, and then I'm gonna make another one. But this is one inch uh, webbing. Get this here, just a roll of this one inch webbing. I probably I bought this a few years ago. Um, big old roll, we use it for lots of other things as you can see. I'm gonna talk about some uh, best practices for cutting and using this kind of stuff. But I uh, did a little bit of experimenting and uh, this gap from, um, from screw to screw is about six inches. And then right, right here on this uh, panel, there's a, a, a ground spot right in the center. So it's three inches from uh, dead center on the panel and six inches total span. And uh, I've already drilled the holes uh, for the, uh, the second side. And then now we're gonna take a look at how I made the strap. A few uh, little uh, tricks I picked up uh, over the years for something like this. So here comes the making strap. Okay, I've cut this strap to 11 inches. Did a little bit of experimenting with the other one. So to span that six inch distance plus some room for a hand and uh, some room for uh, one more little thing. It'll be a surprise at the end. So six inches of strap. And then the next thing uh, that you need to do is just kind of singe the ends so it doesn't unravel. Uh, ever work with paracord, same concept. Singe the ends. wind going all right so my ends are singed <clears throat> all right next thing I'm gonna do is not to be completely on camera but you don't have to see is find about the the uh, inch mark and bend that back so it's doubled over and then just give this a good squeeze it puts a nice crease in it so it's doubled over so we got a double thickness on the end and then now we're going to make our bolt hole so if you see in the background here is my trusty uh heat gun i talked about a minute ago you never believe how many times you use it once you use it so we're going to turn it on and then we're going to heat up a uh, Phillips screwdriver. Uh, just something pointy. It doesn't have to be a screwdriver, but something about the size of the bolt and uh, pointy and that you can get hot. So we're going to heat this up. And this takes a, uh, a good minute or two or three maybe. Like we just burnt the end of that, uh, burnt the end of the webbing. This will melt as it goes through. So we're going to give a test. All right. So I'm going to put this down, and it's going to be kind of straddling my slot here, and then we're going to see if we can punch it through. All right, it went through. So melt it through, we'll flip it over, kind of give it a punch on the back side, and that is fairly hot and burned through. So one more time. All right, 
and it's not a perfect hole which you can see through terribly well but it's a hole now and so now we're just going to punch a, uh, a screw through right now I've got a quarter inch uh, screw in a washer it's an inch long and uh, it's tight which is good so uh, just going to basically uh, just kind of screw this thing into the strap there and then now we're going to do the other side so I won't do that on camera you've seen one uh, you've seen them all so uh, we're going to do one more and then we'll be back okay we are done well, I got uh, both uh, straps on here both handles uh, you could pick this up pretty comfortable you can carry this wherever you need to set it but to make good great we're not going to stop there we're not going to stop there with just two straps I've got a uh, this is a thing that made for a luggage strap you can get these on uh, Amazon too and uh, the cool thing about this one is it's got a little inner uh, sleeve so if we put this in and put the uh, inner sleeve onto one of the straps now when we want to take it loose and uh, open it up we can it doesn't it's not going to go anywhere it's going to stay with the panel but then when we want to carry it we just wrap this around both and then that becomes super comfy so there it is the super comfy carrying strap our solar suitcase is now complete Pretty awesome. So one look at the uh, at the final setup. Here we go. Put in the front. There's our handles and our uh, super dual lock Velcro for the latches. Here's our uh, hinges installed. The rest of our latch is in storage mode. One more handle with uh, the super comfy grip. And then, as we look in the back, there's our stands. All we need to do is just uh, uncoil our, our charge leads, stretch them out to the uh, charge controller and our battery, and we are ready to charge with our solar suitcase.